This is the uh, 187 arrest. It's your final arrest report. Uh, I just wanted to give you an overview of the scenario. At this point, uh, you're probably working on your uh, double murder report of uh, Charles and Valerie Leeds. Now, we have to play with time a little bit. Uh, the murder occurred on Sunday, so we're going to uh, imagine that, uh, simulate that today is Wednesday. Uh, it's about 13.05 hours, and you're going to hear uh, two radio tapes. The first is going to be uh, a broadcast of a felony hit and run at PV Drive and Hawthorne Boulevard. Uh, some of you may recognize this tape as the lead-in to the uh, traffic final. Um, following uh, or during that tape, you're going to hear about a suspect vehicle. It's a blue van, dark blue van, last seen eastbound on uh, PV Drive North. At that point, you're going to imagine you're a patrol officer, you hear the broadcast, you're looking for a place to look for the suspect, and you're going to travel to Western and PCH. You're going to position yourself uh, in that at that intersection, and you're going to hear a second broadcast. Now, the simulated time uh, is going to be 13, 20 hours, so 15 minutes later, uh, on the same day, Wednesday afternoon. You're going to start looking for the suspect vehicle, and you're going to see uh, a dark blue van approaching from eastbound uh, on Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, I need to correct the location. It's Pacific Coast Highway and Western. I'm sorry. When you position yourself, it'll be Pacific Coast Highway and Western. At that intersection, you're going to see a vehicle approaching eastbound on Pacific Coast Highway. It's going to run through a red light at the intersection and it's going to clip uh, a sedan. Uh, you can make up the description on that sedan. Uh, and following uh, the, uh, the traffic collision, it's then going to rapidly leave uh, southbound on Western Avenue. Uh, what I'll need you to do is uh, check the, uh, the motorist, uh, no injuries, ask for help, and then you're going to engage in a pursuit. So the second broadcast is about the pursuit. Uh, it'll include traffic violations and locations, and I'll walk you through that a little bit later. At some point, we are going to uh, stop this guy, uh, the suspect. It's going to be at uh, 25th and Western. We'll arrest him. We'll search his car and recover evidence. Uh, we'll have a, a witness identify the suspect. Uh, we will uh, impound the vehicle for evidence, and the rest of the uh, explanation on this tape will be um, uh, information on the forms that you're going to complete and then a review on the narrative. So prepare for your report. One Tom K, I'm A928 clear. All units, report of a 901T, possible fatal TC, hit and run just occurred, PB Drive and Hawthorne Boulevard. Suspect vehicles, an older model, blue van, partial California license, 579 George, with major front end damage. Suspect is a white male adult, tall, blonde hair. Suspect last seen eastbound on PV Drive, paramedics en route. 901 Tom, handle the report. 901 David, 902 David, 903 David, assist. Handling at 1 Tom, 10 4, ETA about 3. I think at one time, 97, I'm going to need additional traffic control. Uh, this is a fatal. Paramedics are on scene. 901 Tom, 10 4, 905, and 9 L David respond to the intersection of PB Boulevard and Hawthorne. Assist units in traffic control for a 901 T 20001. After hearing the broadcast, uh, it's now about 13, 20 hours. Uh, you're going to go to, uh, you're going to be in the vicinity of Western and Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, believing you may possibly see the suspect, uh, you're going to position your vehicle in that intersection, and this is what you're going to see. A dark blue van uh, approaching rapidly against a red light going uh, eastbound on Pacific Coast Highway approaching western is going to go through the red light, swerve, and clip another vehicle in the intersection. Um, that van is then going to uh, go continue southbound on Western Avenue. You're going to check on the, the driver. The driver will be okay. Slight damage to the vehicle. 
You'll call for a vehicle, another police unit to take a report, and you're going to engage in a pursuit. The second tape will be of that pursuit. Date is January. Time is 13:20 hours. Units uh, stand by for felony hit and run broadcast. Units felony hit and run occurred at 13:05 hours this day at PV Drive North and Hawthorne Boulevard. Suspect vehicle is a dark blue van with partial license plate of 579 George. Vehicle street being driven by a WMA blonde hair, tall, possibly 6'5 or taller, thin build, wearing a white t-shirt and blue jeans. Suspect vehicle has major front end damage, including a broken windshield. Suspect vehicle was last seen fleeing the scene eastbound on PV Drive North from Hawthorne Boulevard. KMA 551 clear. Nine Lincoln Eight Tom. Nine Lincoln Eight Tom. Nine Lincoln Eight Tom. A hit and run just occurred at PCH and Western. Suspect vehicle is now southbound on Western Avenue. Roll me a backup and a unit to handle a TC. I can't tell if there are injuries or not. I'm southbound on Western. A 10 4 hit and run at PCH and Western. All units stand by. Nine Lincoln Six David, Nine Lincoln Two David, start rolling towards PCH and Western. Hit and run just occurred. Nine Lincoln Eight Tom is following a suspect vehicle. Nine Lincoln Eight Tom, do you have a suspect description? Nine Lincoln Eight Tom, affirmative. Suspect vehicle is a blue van. License is 579 George Henry Ida. Suspect is still southbound on Western, approaching Hillcrest at a high rate of speed. 49L8 Tom, be advised, there's a felony hold on that plate for 187. Suspect is a Francis Dollarhide. A WMA 67210 blonde and blue. Vehicle is possibly wanted for an additional felony hit and run this date earlier, PCH and Hawthorne. 9 Lincoln 8 Tom, put me in pursuit still southbound. 9 Lincoln 8 Tom 10 4. 9 Lincoln 8 Tom approaching 25th Street. 9 Lincoln 8 Tom, now, now northbound on Vista Del Mar. 10-4, northbound of Vista Del Mar, all units clear. One in custody, roll me detectives, 9 Lincoln, 6 David is 97. 10-4, uh, one in custody. When uh, you heard the first broadcast, as we talked about earlier, and you positioned yourself, uh, you saw a vehicle uh, rapidly approaching the intersection at Western and Pacific Coast Highway and there was the traffic act, minor traffic accident, and now you're engaged in the pursuit. I want to describe for you uh, the driver's actions because this will need to go in your narrative in your actions and observations. You want to carefully document uh, precisely what uh, the driver did uh, because you're going to use those actions to justify various charges. You're traveling southbound on Western uh, you're going about 65 to 70 miles per hour. That's a 35 mile per hour zone. Uh, while you're chasing the suspect vehicle, as you heard in the pursuit, uh, the suspect is um, uh, going, it went through several red lights. One red light violation, of course, was at, at Western when you first spotted him. Uh, also, the driver went through uh, the red light at uh, Hillcrest and uh, just prior to uh, uh, getting to 25th Street, the driver is going to execute a high-speed, unsafe right turn, making a sharp turn from southbound Western to uh, westbound 25th Street. Prior to that, the driver was also weaving through traffic as it was negotiating uh, southbound Western Avenue, uh, changing lanes, switching lanes, passing cars. Uh, just to remind you relative to the violations, remember the red light violation was 21453A VC. Um, the switching lanes, that's 21658A. You want to talk about the driver uh, passing other vehicles and changing lanes, unsafe lane uh, changes. Uh, as the driver makes the unsafe right turn, now what was unsafe about it was the high speed of the fact it crossed over two lanes. Uh, that's 22107 of the vehicle code. The car will come to a, uh, a stop. It's going to crash against the uh, south curb of 25th Street. 
uh, just west of Western. Uh, at that point, you're going to approach the car and make an arrest. We're going to approach the, uh, the driver. Uh, he is stunned. Uh, he does have a, uh, appears to be a, a wound in his forehead. We'll call paramedics uh, for medical aid. We're going to remove him from his van, search him, and handcuff him. And let's put him in the back of your police car for, uh, uh, to wait for transportation for booking. In the meantime, we need to search the van. Uh, looking into the van from the uh, driver's side uh, window, we're going to see on the floorboard uh, a large knife, about a five and a half uh, inch blade uh, buck knife that is open. We're going to recover that knife. Uh, the knife does have what appears to be dry blood stains on it. Uh, in between the uh, driver's seat and the passenger seat is a, uh, a silver looking cylindrical object with a cutting device on the end. That's a glass cutter. Uh, we're going to recover that. Just to the left of the passenger side floorboard is a black suction cup. Uh, we'll remember to recover that. And then wedged between the uh, passenger side door and the passenger seat, the front seat, is a, about a four foot length nylon cord. Uh, we're going to recover that nylon cord. Looking in the back area, uh, by the way, this is a cargo van. There are no windows on, the, uh, on either of the, of the uh, left or right side in the back. On the floorboard, uh, the first thing that catches uh, my attention is what appears to be a uh, semi-auto pistol. Uh, remember I have told you in prior classes that uh, with regard to weapons we want to seize those early, so let's seize that, that weapon. It is a Colt uh, Gold Cup uh, 45 caliber semi-auto. Uh, when you book it eventually you're going to need to give it a serial number. Uh, remember, we always unload uh, these weapons. Let's clear the action. We'll slide it, uh, the slide back. There is a live round in the chamber. Uh, we'll recover that round. And remember, I want that uh, a live rounds from the chamber book separately. Uh, we will release the magazine. There are six rounds in the magazine. Uh, we are going to recover that magazine in those rounds. And we are going to seize the gun itself. Just to the right, looking from the back of the van to the front, is a cylindrical tube about uh, about six inches five and a half inches it is baffled inside uh, this is a silencer let's recover uh, this object and book it for evidence walking around the uh, the van you'll notice there is left front damage let's take a photograph of that damage uh, you'll also notice that uh, on the left rear fender is uh, what appears to be green paint transfer. You'll need to collect that paint transfer in the manner that uh, we have uh, discussed. There's also dried blood on the inside of the windshield. Uh, make sure you uh, recover that blood uh, and package it appropriately. Um, and that is pretty much it on, the, uh, on the, both the inside and the outside of that van. Uh, there is some mud on the fender wells. You may recall that I've, I've mentioned that sometimes uh, dirt, mud can be chemically uh, analyzed and compared. So let's go ahead and take a sample of that mud uh, just for uh, safety purposes. Uh, we're we're going to impound this vehicle, uh, held for evidence. We'll let the detectives worry about prints, fingerprints, and uh, so on inside the car. By the way, the, this is a 1982 Chevy. Uh, the license number is 579 George Henry Ida. It is registered to Francis Dollarhide. At this point, uh, we want to get an attempt of field identification of the suspect. Uh, you're going to need to ask for a unit uh, to pick up a witness at the scene of the traffic, the, the fatal traffic collision. Now, that's the one at PV Drive and Hawthorne Boulevard. Have that unit transport the witness to your location. Uh, in your narrative, you're going to need to remember to have the officer doing the transporting to admonish the witness regarding field identification procedures and then attempt the identification. And that's what we're going to do. What you'll see next will be uh, a shot of this uh, suspect uh, who is being held, uh, being detained by a police officer, and you're going to hear the witness uh, make the identification.
Yeah, that's him. I saw him hit the green car. Following the identification of the suspect, the field ID, um, you're going to want to transport uh, this prisoner back to the station uh, and have him uh, booked. Uh, prior to doing that, I need to give you a few facts. Uh, I think we should probably uh, have him, let's see, you spotted him at 13, uh, 20 hours. There was a pursuit that lasted about uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, about a 10-minute arrest process about a 30-minute uh, search process. Uh, you're going to eventually get this prisoner booked uh, at 1545 hours, so why don't you uh, just make a note of that, and I'm going to start going through the forms. We're going to do the booking page first. The booking number in the upper left-hand corner will be any seven-digit number. Just make it up. Driver's license, none. We're going to use a booking time of 1,600 hours. The file number is going to be the DR number from your 187 crime report. Clothing worn and vehicle license number, you've already been provided with that information. In the charge block, use the primary and most serious charge in this block. Don't forget to include suspicion of a felony. 836.3 of the penal code. So that charge is 187 and add two counts. Total bail will be $100,000. Physical oddities, none. Medical information, laceration to the forehead. Property, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, property retained, none. Money retained, none. Property deposited, a hoop, yellow metal earring, and a watch. Describe the watch. Money deposited. Make up any amount. But don't make it much. Court. Harbor. Arraignment date. Whatever the next Monday is, keep in mind, this is a Wednesday. So whatever the next Monday is, uh, use a date of some kind, whatever fits, and it'll be 9 a.m. Arresting officer, that will be you. Booking employee, make it up. Searching officer, that will be you. And you will also be the transporting officer. That is it for this form. Stand by for form number two, additional charge sheet. Okay, we're going to transition here, and is it going to be a new graphic? No. Okay. I'm just giving them time to pull out the next sheet. Okay, so we want uh, 10, 15 seconds between. Yeah, sheets. sure. Okay. Next sheet is the additional charge sheet. On this form, you will be uh, uh, adding the various crimes that we can charge the suspect with starting with the next most serious charge. Do not use the first three columns pertaining to warrants on this form. Start with the fourth column. Also, it's possible we're not going to have enough space. You may have to resort to another form to cover the last charge. The second most serious violation that we are going to deal with is going to be, and this will be on the first line, fourth column, 192 of the vehicle code, correction, penal code, vehicular manslaughter. 192 PC, vehicular manslaughter. You no longer need the 836.3. We only need to use that once, and we did for the first charge. Charge number two, uh, and this may come as a surprise, it is, a, it is the next most serious crime, possession of a silencer. 12500 of the penal code.
The next charge will be felony hit and run. That is 20,001 felony hit and run. That's the vehicle code. Charge number five, but number four on this sheet, will be 2800.2 felony evading arrest. Charge number six, but number five, I think it's five on this sheet, it might be six, is 12025. PC, concealed weapon in a car. Charge number seven on this sheet, number eight overall, is 12031, a loaded vehicle, I'm sorry, a loaded firearm in a vehicle. Charge number eight on this sheet, number nine overall, is 20,002 VC misdemeanor hit and run. Charge number nine on this sheet, 10 overall, is 653K PC possession of an illegal knife. That is it for these charges. Don't forget there is a hold on that vehicle uh, for felony hit and run, and we're going to move to the next sheet. The next form is probable cause declaration. Complete the top part of this form. You have all the data. You are the officer listed. Do not forget the booking number. In the space provided, summarize the probable cause to arrest the defendant. You shouldn't use more than four lines provided. Basically, you're answering the question, why did I arrest him? Be careful that you don't try to rewrite the arrest report because th that'll just simply be too much information. Uh, make sure you use your your graded 211 arrest report is a guide on this. That'll help you correct some of your mistakes. Sign and print your name. Sign and print the judge's name. And check off the appropriate boxes. That's it for this form. Next form is the witness identification form or the field ID form. A word of caution, you are not the officer listed on this form. You need to invent an officer to do the transportation from the original fatal traffic accident scene. Create a witness's name and list it on the form along with any comments made by the witness. Next form is the property report. Review the sketch of the vehicle and evidence list. Collect appropriate evidence both inside and outside of the vehicle. By way of explanation, the cylindrical tube that is described on your evidence list is a silencer. Don't forget to use the paint transfer collection techniques that you were taught and do not forget a control sample. So you're going to list all the evidence you're collecting including the blood sample, the paint transfer, the control sample, and a sample of the mud. Please use good descriptive words for your evidence items. The next form is the crime report face page. Now this is the form that created some problems for you, uh, some of you, in the, uh, the robbery arrest report. This is a fairly insignificant document in the package. It should not be first uh, in your package, and it cannot 
absolutely cannot list the 187 for which you are arresting this person. This form is to document the previous undocumented crimes that we discovered at the time of the arrest. I would say that possession of the silencer is the most serious of these new violations. So, on this crime report, I would like to see 12500 penal code. Possession of a silencer is the primary crime. I would list as your secondary violation the 2800.2 VC felony evading arrest. Other counts, plug in your, your weapons violations, that's the 12031 and the 12025. This should be a new DR number, use the arrest date and time, list state of California as the victim. The location will be 25th and Western. You will uh, be listed as the reporting party and witness. Do not list your residential address or phone number. 1 final form uh, that we're going to use for this package we did not use on the robbery, although we should have, and that's going to be the uh, vehicle storage form. Uh, there should be uh, ample uh, uh, copies of that, both in the back of room 202 and the front of room 206. Um, just fill in the blanks that apply. That is it for the forms. It's a good opportunity just to kind of go over the narrative on arrest reports. Uh, remember that uh, you were writing in the first person. We're documenting what we saw, what we heard, and what we did. You will start off with the preliminary information. In this preliminary information, I want uh, the initial broadcast of the felony of the fatal traffic collision that's the 20,001 at PV Drive North and Hawthorne Boulevard. Please remember to include a description of the suspect, a description of the vehicle that included that partial license plate, I think it was 579G as in George, and the suspect's direction of travel. Your next category is actions and observations. I would like you to lead off in this category uh, by positioning yourself at Western and Pacific Coast Highway, or PCH, and indicate that you are monitoring traffic looking for the suspect vehicle. I would like you then to document spotting that vehicle as it slides through the intersection, clipping the uh, vehicle we mentioned, and then taking off southbound on Western. At that point, you are going to activate your emergency equipment. That would be your emergency red and blue lights and siren. You're going to run the license plate and learn that is, there's a felony hold for 187. The driver is France, the owner is Francis Dollarhide. And you're going to engage in your pursuit. During this phase, I want you to be able to describe uh, the, drive, the uh, suspect's driving the, the weaving through traffic, remember that's 21658A. The red light violations at Westmont, Hillcrest, and 25th Street. The unsafe right turn, and don't forget, don't just call it unsafe. You need to explain why it's unsafe. And then the culmination of this vehicle crashing and coming to a stop. In the arrest category, which follows, Describe approaching the vehicle, removing the suspect, describing his condition, getting his medical care, and placing him under arrest, searching him and handcuffing him. I would then do your arrest scene search. While you're doing that, though, you should make a request for a witness to come to your location for a field ID. Then begin your search. Now, we've covered this a couple of times already. You're going to document your searching of the interior of that vehicle, what you're seeing, the evidence that you have found and collected, a search of the exterior of the vehicle, including the evidence you found on the outside, and documenting all of that. Remember, 
that the primary um, purpose for this section is to describe the scene, and that's what you need to do. I would create a separate category since we have a field ID and call it field identification. In that, uh, that is when your witness who is being transported by some officer that you've created who has admonished that witness, and don't forget, uh, use a name for the witness, to have the witness make the identification. Following that, I would go ahead and write your conclusion. In your conclusion, you need to answer the question, why did you arrest this person? And it certainly should start off with the broadcast information that you first heard. Include all the elements of probable cause that um, uh, contributed to this arrest and the disposition of the prisoner and the disposition of the vehicle, which was, as you may recall, I mentioned it was towed, impounded and towed uh, at a police impound lot. Finally, one last form that I didn't talk about, I, I don't think I did, it was the property report. Please list all evidence collected. Uh, I would add one thing. Uh, when you uh, uh, arrest this person and you have him in custody, let's do a gunshot residue test, GSR, and let's uh, have it come back positive and book the GSR kit. That is it. Uh, you have your information and you may write the report.